Hello everyone, this is the Mythical Dragon. Welcome back to the Dragon's Den. Pull up a seat and select a drink of your choice. Whatever you like tonight, it's for you. And we're gonna do, I know, another D&D related podcast episode. My apologies, but the speech was actually really important to me. So it is a speech from Toastmasters. And the Pathway Project is a level 5 project, a big one by the way. It is a 18 to 22 minute speech and you're supposed to speak professionally on a topic. So it's supposed to be delivered like a keynote. So like a TED Talk styled sort of presentation. And this speech actually means a little more to me than I first thought it would because I asked my students, kind of leading up to the week where I needed to deliver the speech, what D&D has taught them. So what are some of the benefits that they have seen in their lives for how D&D has helped them? And so I took some of that feedback I had from my students and we had some really cool discussions before we played the games, of course, so like the before class part. And it came up with some really cool things. So this was just based on the things that they've told me, as well as some of the things that I have learned from playing D&D myself in the past five years. So it's a really cool speech, a very important one to me. It's quite a long one, like I said, 18, 22 minutes. And I thought I'd share it with everyone here in the little podcast. So I hope you enjoy it. And just a reminder, this is stuff I took from my students. It is not a comprehensive list of the benefits of D&D. I know there are so, so many more out there. But again, this is just directly from my students. And some examples of one of my very first sessions I played with my uncle, actually, um, is seven years ago. <laughs> so it's quite a little, it's very specific to what my students have told me and what I have experienced. I know others will have other experiences and other benefits under their wing. And if you do, please share it with me. Let me know in the comments. And if you are interested in playing D&D, let me know as well. I am looking for some players to do one shot. So, hey, hey, open call for D&D people. But let's begin, shall we? The speech is called Define Dungeons and Dragons because, well, first of all, alliteration and English was my major in university, so I really appreciate that. But it is defined D&D because everyone thinks D&D is just this nerdy tabletop role-playing game that people do, and it's just a nerdy game. So that's why we're defining it by saying, no, it's more than just a nerdy game. There is a lot more that comes from this game than you think. So let's begin. A mythical dragon here with my speech, define Dungeons and Dragons, a mythical dragon. Close your eyes and imagine this. You and your closest friends have been able to teleport to a different fantasy world. Each one of you dressed in a certain specialty. Whether you are wielding weapons and are ready to fight at any given second, wielding a magical staff or wand that can harm or heal you, or some sort of combination of both. You feel ready to take on the world, destroy evil, and maybe, just maybe, even meet a dragon on your journeys. Dungeons and Dragons is an interesting experience for anyone who takes up the challenge to learn the game, be immersed in the story, and stretch themselves to think outside the box or conjure different forms of reality. These are just a few of the benefits of playing D&D, besides also the main objective, having fun. Believe it or not, playing this game can help people of any age learn key communication, problem solving, and impromptu decision making skills that can be applied to your daily life. This game fosters creativity as you have your character try new things, imagine different scenarios, or even describe what your particular magic looks like when you cast a spell. It's a remarkable experience that can unlock so much for someone. Like myself, the past five years of playing the game 
to now teaching the game three times a week online. I bet some of you who don't play this game are wondering, it's a game. How can a game do that much for someone? Well, let's break it down into a few categories. Communication, problem solving, impromptu decision-making skills, and fostering creativity and a sense of imagination. Most times when people gather together to play d and there are not a lot of visual representations of what the characters are doing or seen in the game. Players will have the character sheet be telling their character's abilities, their equipment, what they look like, what they can do. You may have a notebook or a device to take notes with, a pen, a pencil, and some d and specific dice. And that's usually it. This means that the game requires a lot of communication of what your character is doing, what they are thinking, and describing what they look like or what the scenery looks like. The key elements of communication that are developed in games like this are building up your descriptive language vocabulary, your persuasive skill, and how you connect with others. Descriptive language makes the most sense as the game becomes a bit boring if you cannot share with others what your character comes from, the area you are entering, or even what cool things your character has on them. Sometimes it's limiting to the medieval time period or a certain time period in particular, but what is unique is that there are still a lot of scenes in d and that relate to our world today. For example, we have all taken a drive through the mountains, the forest, or seen a beach, right? How would you describe those landscapes? In d and we like to exaggerate our descriptions of these typical common sceneries. For example, the mountains loom up further ahead with a shroud of mist and fog, making it nearly impossible to see the snow-capped peaks as you continue walking down the road to your destination. Now most people would simply take that description of seeing some mountains and only say something like, man, the mountains would look nicer if there wasn't all this cloudy weather. By adding in more details and specifics in these descriptions, your language and vocabulary improves immensely through each session or game of d and you play, simply by just describing every little detail or every little thing you can see. As for persuasion in d and this is more than just a skill on your character sheet that you check off so that your character can be good at it. In a lot of D&D games, your dungeon master or game lead or in my case, a teacher will ask you, what do you say specifically to try to persuade the guard to let you into the city? Or what do you specifically say to try to convince that person to give you that sword? We do this instead of simply going, yeah, okay, sure, roll the persuasion skills, dice, and we'll just see what happens depending on what you roll. When you ask that question, what do you specifically say? This adds a unique challenge to us as players in the game. Suddenly we are put on the spot and have to find the correct words or the weight of importance to our words in order to be successful at persuading others to do something or let you have something. I remember once I tried to convince my uncle to just let me roll that skill check, persuasion, for example, without saying anything and anything in character, I should say. And in the game, he made me roll the skill at a disadvantage because he made it sound like my character was just trying to stare down the guard to let me in. Luckily, my uncle let me try again and I was able to have my character say something along the lines like, please sir, we need entrance into this city as we've been protecting this group of people from an onslaught of bandits and creatures all day. We just need a safe place to rest. Finding the right words, having your character speak them in the game 
is an interesting challenge and allows you to figure out what persuasion really can be or cannot be depending if you are successful or not. Then there is connecting with others. Naturally, a Dungeons and Dragons game is often played with a group of people. This builds a dynamic where you have to work together all in the game and outside of the game to create a fun, engaging, and unique story. This involves having your characters talk to each other to get to know each other in the game, find out what's important to everyone, and to make key decisions that impact the direction of the game. If you had a group of people who just had their dungeon masters state what their characters did and what they said for you, well that's not a very fun game anymore, is it? It's being told what to do and how to do it when the whole point of the game is to create a story together. As players, we also need to communicate and build connections together to make sure that we are having fun, especially in moments of conflict in the game. In D&D, each character often has an alignment they follow, and sometimes the alignment is not very important in the game, but sometimes it is brought up, as you could be a good character, evil, neutral, chaotic, or lawful character. And when you play a game where all of these alignments exist, sometimes a player or a character can feel left out, or will not agree with the decisions being made. Having that chance to check in with each person at your table it will allow people to express how they're feeling, say what they need, and we can work together to find solutions to make sure that the game is fun for everyone. I have also hinted at this a little bit through our discussion of communication skills, but the next key area someone develops more of is problem solving skills. Dungeons and Dragons is a game full of conflict. And as players and characters, we are sent, for example, to go solve a problem in a town or deal with a dangerous enemy. When you're going on these quests, many of them have little puzzles woven in them, such as how do we get across a fast flowing river, solve riddles, or even how do we climb a mountain with little equipment. Every challenge that gets presented in the game is something the players have to discuss to try to solve. Now, of course, it's still a game, so they are very lucky to have magic and cool tools or weapons to make these solutions easier sometimes, but it's communicating how they use these things to solve a problem that is key. For example, I had a student in one of my classes a little while ago simply say, I have a crowbar in regards to a locked door. Now, of course, we know what we were, he was going to do with the crowbar. He was going to wedge it in, pry the door open, and or at least see if he could do that. But with a little bit of help, I had the student then get their character to say, Hey, everyone, I have a crowbar. Want me to try to wedge it in and pry open the door? So as you can see, we cannot always visualize what's happening in the game. So communicating these actions or solutions with as much detail as possible is, can what, is what makes the game more successful and unique. I've had other students think really outside the box when they had their pots from their little mess kits and things like that. Tap on a wall, like a pot for example, not a tap, not like they're like knocking on a wall or anything like that, a pot. They tapped along the wall to find a hollow, sp hollow spot so that they can blast through it and save someone on the other side of the wall who was being hurt. As you can see, problem solving in the game is really out of the box thinking most times, but the way everyone communicates solutions or looks at their character's skills to see what they can do makes problem solving an important skill to develop in order to be successful in the game. The next stage, after problem solving skills being developed, is then to work on impromptu or quick decision making skills. Not always, but in some cases, there are timed actions and events in D&D. 
This means that your friends or my students or players have to suddenly look at everything their character has in a short time frame and do something about the situation. In combat situations, for example, every round translates to six seconds. Each player has to name an action, a bonus action, or state of their character moves within that six seconds. Now, of course, most DMs will give that player a lot more time than just six seconds to make decisions on what their character does, but more experienced players won't always get that chance. Now, as a teacher, I give my students plenty of time to make these decisions as they are learning the game, and it takes a bit to ask questions or decide what is best. But as they continue to take my classes, that time gets shorter and shorter to reflect the stressful situation or the danger they are in. It's these moments that can lead to some amazing skills being used or even some pretty epic fails. Most players though take both the successes and failures with excitement as it adds to the story or adds to what their character can or cannot do. It's a fantastic skill to develop as quick thinking and being flexible certainly is valued in our society and even in a lot of our careers as well. One of the last benefits to playing a Dungeons, Dungeons and Dragons game is fostering a sense of creativity and imagination. Many of the previous benefits and skills mentioned before have hinted towards this, such as knowing that the game doesn't have visuals most times. Forcing players to really communicate and describe what they can see or do as they see it for themselves and their characters. I've also seen this game develop amazing artists as they have taken what their character has done in the game through the descriptive process and draw it for themselves to bring the game to life. Others will also go online and find relevant images to pull up to aid in bringing some life to the game or to find the closest relevant thing that they are trying to do. Now, it's very cool. In one of my weekly classes, a student thought the magic and the world of the Feywild was really, really cool and had asked if there were any creatures that were like half something and half something else. This sparked a very fun and creative conversation where they made up the following creatures. They created a crocodile, and this is a cross between a crocodile and a cat. So <laughs> for further descriptions, based on what my students said, a crocodile is a creature that has the hat and fur, or the head and fur of a cat, with the body of an alligator. The claws are like paws, like kitty cat paws, and the tail is a long gator tail. The next student created a creature called a danther, which is a cross between a dog and a panther. In their words, this creature is a, a danther is a creature that has a dog head, the long, lanky body of a panther, and the floofy tail of a dog. Suddenly, in the next session of D&D we had, they came across one of these creatures, and when I described the creature to them, the joy and happiness in their faces that I took something they created and they came up with and put it in the game was an amazing feeling and I absolutely love rewarding my students or friends even with those little gimmicks as it makes it for a fun and unique game of D&D. Plus it aids in that development of their creativity and their imagination building. Dungeons and Dragons, as you can see, is a game that is not only fun to play, learn, make friends, and have as a hobby, but there are many benefits that aid us in our daily lives. Communicating in the game is of utmost importance as the game doesn't always provide visuals, thus developing a large descriptive vocabulary and being able to communicate what you think you see is important. Not only do you need these skills in our lives, 
You also need to know how to communicate as a team in many different situations, both inside and outside of the game as well, especially when having to complete challenges, work towards goals, and complete milestones. A skill that not many think of when it comes to learning this particular game is how to be persuasive. Because in the game, and in a lot of cases our lives as well, being able to communicate what you need and how to appeal to others to get what you need is important. The game also naturally builds connections amongst everyone playing as people want to learn about the story, the world, their characters, and even more so that they can create a great story for everyone playing the game. When faced with difficult situations, this game also works toward problem solving skills uh, where creativity is encouraged, the successes are celebrated, and the failures provide everyone a chance to learn and maybe try something different the next time they come across the issue. The last key benefit D&D can provide to anyone wanting to try it out for themselves is developing quick, impromptu thinking skills, as most things in this game are either timed or you were under a lot of pressure, which of course many of us know what that feels like on a regular basis in our lives. There is so much more to D&D than simply rolling some dice, destroying evil creatures, and coming together to make friends. As a person, you learn valuable skills that you can apply to your everyday life. And who wouldn't want to have some fun while also growing as a person? Plus, when you get that very cool moment in the game where everyone around you applauds or cheers, it can be quite a special moment for all who play Dungeons & Dragons. Oh, that is the speech! I hope it was at least interesting or maybe some of you were nodding your heads and think you're feeling the same way or even are remembering some things that have happened in your D&D games that relate to some of this as well. It's really, really cool. And yeah, a lot of my students said a lot of this, by the way. So I had a couple students mention that they were really excited to create their own creatures in our campaign in our homebrew world of the Feywilds. Others are very excited that they get to actually find the best way to describe stuff because they're not very good at describing things regularly. And then yeah, working as a team, communicating, and trying to figure out how are we going to get across this river of fire. <laughs> so I directly took all of the information they gave me and threw it into the speech because if I'm teaching my students these things, then yes, D&D is far more than just a regular game that you go to to escape reality. It's a game that suddenly you are learning how to socialize and talk to people. You are learning how to think outside of how you normally think, because again, there is a difference between you as a player and you as your character. Not always, but if you're challenging yourself to play different characters, then you really get to think of different solutions or different ways to handle things that you normally probably would never ever ever have thought of. So this game means so much to me. I hope you were able to get a little glimpse of that through this speech and a little bit of this discussion as well. So thank you everyone for listening to this shorter podcast episode and allowing me to have this space to talk about D&D again because I thoroughly love it and I got to share a little bit of my teaching world with you which is phenomenal uh, so I'll wrap it up here thank you everyone for listening let me know about your stories of D&D in the comments below and we'll chat next week with a new topic, probably about cooking or maybe about traveling. Who knows? We'll see. But take care, everyone out there, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.